quite so now here um, this is a peripheral nerve intersection using therapy under ultrasound guidance so uh, there are different types of PRP of course we have the low density type we have the high density type and depending on the target then we kind of choose which ones uh, we're using for the purpose of the nerve we would prefer the low density type instead of the high density uh, because of a lot of pain with the high density type so here uh, we I would I would I usually prefer this classification of PRP by Mars pill because it thinks uh, activation the presence of RBC the number of spin use of each guidance the number of leukocytes like activation so it more or less uh, covers all the factors that I like to see in a in a in a PRP <laughs> of, of a hybridized section of the sciatic nerve. So as you can see, the sciatic nerve is right here. And uh, I'm trying to target that area uh, using uh, a probe and uh, trying to hydrate in order to uh, And then this is another example of a common peroneal nerve hydrodissection. So this is uh, the sartorius and this is your tensor fascia lata. And uh, of course, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is right in between. And uh, a, above, also that nerve in order to remove any possible impingement in, in the uh, depending on what you uh, choose to uh, use as a, as a solution, you can either use dextrose or PRP, or in my case, I use also A2M for that uh, particular purpose. And this is also another action of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So just another view of uh, the same nerve that we are trying to hydrosect. So here, uh, PRP, uh, is found out uh, to have uh, help in the regeneration of injured peripheral nerves and, of course, in repairing it uh, in the process of injecting it. And there are other studies also that uh, PRP uh, produce nerve growth factor and GDNF. And, of course, uh, we know that both of these are painful. But studies have shown that uh, 25 to 20 percent PRP will significantly stimulate stem cells proliferation, but high PRP concentration of more than 40% will suppress uh, its effects. So uh, it's very important to know exactly though where it works better for these conditions. And another study, of, of course, uh, in, in carpal tunnel syndrome, this is in 2019, 150 patients were injected with single PRP and it uh, has proven to be effective for mild to moderate Caltanel syndrome. It superior than corticosteroid in improving pain, function, and distal sensory latency of the median nerve. So uh, just one uh, injection of these uh, of the substances. Of course, they compare it with corticosteroid for carpal tunnel syndrome, and of course, uh, therapy uh, results with a superior uh, effect and longer effect as compared to your steroid. And, uh, with the nerves using PRP for mild to moderate carpal tunnel syndrome, this is a systematic review and meta-analysis uh, of, uh, of, of these different types of PRP pre uh, preparations addressing carpal tunnel syndrome. And of course, uh, the, the result shows that there is a, a good effect of PRP for these conditions. So other studies also comparing PRP and steroid have shown that all the way we say that the steroids uh, seem to be brought to the sides, uh, but in the initial phase, steroids are also effective in the treatment of pain, but then over time, the pain will recur uh, early on as compared to your PRP injection. So 
how about in the art articular cartilage? How does it work? So <clears throat> in this study, it shows that there is a dose-dependent deleterious effects on cartilage morphology, histology, and viability, both in vitro and in vivo models. So in other words, keep using steroids over time, it will really destroy your cartilage and it will change the histologic property of the tissue that you're injecting. Here also is uh, another comparative uh, study of PRP and corticosteroid in the plantar and uh, the PRP yielded a statistically significant improvement uh, compared to corticosteroids. Another study here of uh, PRP and uh, corticosteroid in the lateral epicondylitis also shows a more favorable results for PRP. Same holds true with this uh, result uh, study in the tennis elbow, same results uh, with uh, good uh, effect, longer effect with PRP in six months period. So here in adhesive capsulitis, a lot of times we also encounter this problem. And again, the use of PRP is safe and has the potential to reduce pain and improve the functional outcome with a prolonged efficiency than steroid ejections. Here is another study, of course, uh, uh, steroids in PRP with PRP uh, showing a better uh, result. Same holds true here. They compare PRP with HA, with botulinum, with ozone, with placebo, corticosteroids. So all this other stuff brought together and PRP uh, seems to show a better result over six and 12 months than all those uh, things uh, together. This is also for hamstring. So again, uh, steroid showed a significant effect uh, in, as a result of this study. Also in the lumbar spine, PRP is safer than steroid in lumbar radicular pain. So a lot of this here is showing how PRP is compared to all of these uh, uh, other structures being used for treatment. And of course, for the knee, uh, also PRP was uh, compared with steroids and how it affects. So over six months, uh, uh, PRP have a better results than uh, um, steroids. Of course, here is another one with HA. Uh, PRP is also compared with HA and PRP showing a better result uh, in terms of effect on the knee osteoarthritis. So what is the new frontiers in regenerative medicine? So usually, since we are more of the neuropathic pain, uh, this is the course of a nerve injury. So usually in the first three days, there is an inflammatory cells that goes into the area of injury, uh, including your macrophages and, uh, and other cells. And there is a series of events of nerve inflammation that is regulated by cytokines. And the biomarker of Wallerian degeneration here is the TNF alpha. So this is usually increase at the site of injury. And this is also the one that's causing nerve pain. So remember this one, TNF alpha. And there are other inflammatory cytokines that contribute to the pain, which includes interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-18, and interferon gamma. These all contribute to nerve pain and inflammation. Now, uh, cytokines, uh, there, as, uh, as I mentioned, those are the bad cytokines, but they're also good cytokines. But here, the cytokines is mainly present to communicate cells, give them direction as to what to do, and it has a direct impact on the body with, where it is targeted because it targets on specific sites here. So the pro-inflammatory cytokines and, and also, it is important to realize that there are lifestyle that could also enhance the pro-inflammatory cytokines such as smoking or the pro-inflammatory diet. And uh, of course, uh, this will increase and enhance cytokines and uh, will increase the inflammatory of uh, the issues being uh, treated. So the tumor necrosis factor, or the TNF, is the master inflammatory cytokines and it causes cellular apoptosis, dehydration, necrosis, and of course, it overrides the anabolic repair mechanisms that's been going on when a nerve is injured, and uh, it could take over the PRP's expression of regenerative growth factors. So, uh, very important to know how how all these factors are 
work. Then you can one versus chronic and acute conditions. It's also present in disease and injury, and it's just like your TNF alpha. It also serves to enhance inflammation and destroy collagen. And of course, it, it causes catabolic mechanisms. In Triukin 6, we know this because of COVID, there's a lot of uh, uh, cytokine storms. It's present inflammatory disease, injuries, and metabolic conditions, and keeps inflammation, inflammatory responses high, and it is present always in, in painful conditions. And this drives other cytokines into an inflammatory response. So with that, uh, I would like to introduce the alpha-2 macroglobulin. It is, it is a homotetrameric 718 kilodalton protein uh, present at high concentration. And this is first recognized broad spectrum protease inhibitor. Large numbers of good factor cytokines binds to A2M. So it's, it almost looks like a carrier and it controls inflammation and regulates cell physiology. And the effect of A2M, uh, here I described two, two areas. The first is the, car the cartilage causing uh, all these uh, pains in the knee. So the A2M will treat cartilage-based pathology. It is an active inhibitor of joint degeneration and cartilage preservation. It treats inflammatory and painful arthritis, including gouty arthritis. And for the nerve, it alters the course of peripheral nerve it treats neuropathic pains and regulate the distribution and activity of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So this is the normal value of your HM. Uh, all age groups should have 100 to 208 milligrams per deciliter. So <clears throat> this HM is very interesting. Six and interleukin eight, and so as you can see here, this A2M will basically neutralize all those bad inflammatory cytokines, causing the pain in the nerve or even in the joints. So it alleviates pain and reduces cartilage loss by slowing cartilage degeneration. So here another publication describing how A2M works. So. It binds to interleukin 1 beta and 10 alpha fully. It inhibits also fibroblast growth factor in a way. And zinc ions be help. It binds in 10 6 and other good factors. So it, it sort of regulates NGF in the plasma, which we know that it causes uh, pain. So it kind of uh, regulates the release so that there will be no pain in the, in, the, in the process. It enhances TGF beta-1, which is very important for cartilage growth. It also affects hormones such as leptin that controls appetite and energy expenditure. So, so why not just PRP? Because as we have mentioned, that the level of PRP with its NGF uh, also contributes to the pain and PRP has no ability to neutralize fully the pro-inflammatory cytokines such as the TNF-alpha interleukin-1 and interleukin-6. So here, A2M, and A2M usually is taken from the platelet poor plasma portion and under ultrasound guided uh, procedures. So at three months, 61% of syndrome 35% of CRPS and 24% of muscle pains showed clinical improvement. And over six months, there were further improvements noticed on these specific uh, areas and conditions mentioned here. Uh, this is a very exciting uh, treatment nerve injury. And so here, this is also a C5 nerve root, hydrodissection with A2F. Uh, uh, injected on that particular area. This is also a peripheral nerve hydrodissection on the median nerve in carpal tunnel. And uh, what it, how it does, it, it binds with proteases and it forms a complex and at the same time it excretes the complex and rendered it uh, neutralized so that it won't work anymore. So this is another illustration 
how all these things work. And then of course, uh, uh, it, as we said, neutralizes the pro-inflammatory cytokines and that it contributes to uh, removal of that uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that is causing the pain in the tissues. So here is a, a, a patient of mine we injected July 2016, 2019. And you can see here that there is a very abnormal uh, nerve uh, with a very uh, swollen uh, nerve um, by cross-sectional area. And after a month, when we examine uh, again the patient, then the nerve has reduced and almost uh, 0 0.11 in cross-sectional area. Uh, and this is uh, a patient with a posterior knee pain, unresponsive to physical therapy and other medications. Now, the patient is a 35-year-old female, transtibial amputee for about seven years, using baloney prosthesis. I re had recent onset of stump pain for three months, and we started with pain medications, opioids, physical therapy, no relief. I had three sessions of PRP, still with no relief. So we tried, uh, and this is the patient with a with, uh, uh, amputation. So this is the ultrasound findings. So you can see here a knee vascularization, very painful. That's a neuroma uh, of the sciatic nerve. So here, after given two sessions of A2M, two, week, two weeks apart, and it's been uh, more than actually two years now uh, from where I first saw her, he is now engaged with so many sports activities with no pain at all. So for degenerative joint disease, uh, of course, the same problems, but the mechanism is that it actually reduces its effect on the cartilage by uh, reducing the, the, the degeneration of cartilage. And of course, uh, the pain in the knee is more strongly associated with bone marrow lesions, synovitis and joint diffusion, but weaker association with cartilage damage. And here, there are three areas that we address that's nociceptive, which is the actual damage in the joint, the inflammatory, and the neuropathic. And so, as we can look at the knee, there's just a lot of nerves in the knee, uh, if you are, would like to treat them all. And so, this is also what you see as uh, inflammatory and radiographic symptoms, radiographic findings that relates to pain. So, the question is, are we hitting the right target? So if with all these drugs available, it has a lot of different mechanism, but so far it doesn't quite affect on the pain itself. So with the atrium and osteoarthritis, it treats cartilage-based pathology, and it also inhibits ADAM7 and ADAM12, and it treats inflammatory and painful arthritis, and it, it, it inhibits the ADAMS family. So here we can see also uh, these substances, the pro-inflammatory cytokines in the joints, and then H2M works on that area. So this is how the, the symptoms appear and how all these uh, bad cytokines put, go into play with this particular uh, pathology and how H2M would, would take uh, a role in neutralizing all these symptoms. So this one here is uh, an, an osteoarthritic with uh, synovitis and of course synovial fluid with degenerated meniscus and osteopite formation. This is also a degenerated meniscus in knee osteoarthritis. And of course, uh, we treated it with uh, also H2M. So in summary, uh, ultrasound guided peripheral nerve hydrosection is an easy office procedure. Uh, although there's still a lot of research to be done uh, to look for the nerve regeneration. And of course, uh, it is very important to know exactly what is the diagnosis as it cannot treat those uh, neuromesis uh, pathology. Uh, and of course, uh, there are other pathologic conditions that we need to know what may be causing it. It could be uh, part of the constitutional symptoms of a disease. And of course, uh, it is also very important that we can make use also of dextrose water initially, especially for those who come to us for the first time because it has an ability to inhibit a substance P and CGRP, and PRP has a synergistic effect in nerve regeneration. And of course, it may require more than uh, one session uh, over two to four weeks interval. And of course, uh, use of A2M is also very important, especially for those patients with a lot of pain. 
because of its potent treatment for neuropathic and chronic pains. It is ability to counteract the bad inflammatory cytokines such as your TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6. And this is also excellent for inflammatory arthritis and chronic degenerative joint disease. So thank you very much for your attention and your time. So thank you, Dr. Ashok, for inviting me here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Castro, for your excellent talk. So there are two questions. One is, uh, if we combine dextrose 5 hydro dissection, when we mix it with lignocaine, compare using only dextrose, some, because sometimes the patient complain of pain when you use only 5% dextrose. So if you combine lignocaine with D5, will it have the same effect or are you using it normally? Usually, uh, okay, that's a very good question. Thank you for that question. Um, usually, 5% uh, dextrose, of course, there are people who are, com who are making uh, different uh, combination of percentage of dextrose. Some, some people do 15%, 25%. But for nerves, we usually uh, encourage 5%. And that is what seems to work for uh, the nerves, uh, the 5%. The some people would combine with lidocaine, but in my case, I would not combine it uh, because the five percent dextrose actually works on itself, especially if you do an ultrasound guided and you target the specific sites of the swelling of the nerve. And, and usually when lidocaine uh, is combined, uh, it could provide, it could give you a certain degree of numbness but not a long-lasting relief. But the 5% dextrose can provide you a, at least, uh, because this is a cumulative effect, you have to do it several times. And usually six, four to six sessions would be sufficient for a patient with, with pain. So uh, the, the effect would be cumulatively decreasing over time. Uh, there's another question with, from Dr. Amir. He is from Dubai and he's a regenerative uh, specialist and orthopedic surgeon. So he's asking, can we add a steroid to PRP? You, you know what, depending on the concentration, but if it's uh, uh, diluted to maybe about uh, uh, 0.002 percent. So you, you have to dilute the steroids that much. And uh, they say that it has uh, a synergistic effect. Uh, but if you use the, the steroids per se, the one that is ready to be injected with PRP, it kind of uh, uh, neutralizes each other. So PRP is a pro-inflammatory uh, regenerative solution. Steroids is an anti-inflammatory, so you kind of neutralize each other. So I would, I would suggest you don't uh, really combine it unless you have to dilute it to somewhere like 0.002%. Uh, uh, there's one question from Siddharth Verma. What is the best way to obtain A2M? And please describe the exact method you recommend. And what commercial preparation do you use for PRP? How do you measure the active range, say like 10 to 20%? Okay, there are three commercially available method of, uh, of obtaining A2M. Uh, of course, uh, the first one who, who did this is Cytonics, uh, where you have to uh, centrifuge it uh, longer. And of course, uh, you have to use a different uh, method of centrifugal force. There is a specific machine for it. But there are other two ways to do it. Uh, the one that was made by Apex, and of course the one by Pure Excel, where they filter it uh, with two kinds of filter. The other one is five microns and 0 0.02 microns, and the, the the first one is intended to trap the cell, uh, and then the other one is intended to trap the A2M and uh, and reverse and push it back to another container to be able to get the ATM. So um, there's not much time to describe all the details here, but 
but uh, I, I think if you just would like to use the filter, uh, that is also good enough. Although the one in Cytronics is a little expensive uh, and this is really designed for uh, osteoarthritis or cartilage problems. 